What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be tackling the wiring harness for the engine. We're not going to be doing the chassis side just yet until it's in the engine, but we're just going to do that. I'm going to walk you through how you can do it yourself. Ross is squirting at me. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, it's, wiring harnesses sound super scary, but I'm going to show you that then actually not. It's, even if you don't know wiring, you can do it yourself. It's literally following a trail to a point, that's it. So we're going to be using the EMU Black from ECU Master. Um, it's the most affordable ECU you can get really. I mean, you can get the Classic, which is quite a, quite a bit cheaper, but might as well go for the Black. It does more stuff, it's more modern. Here are all your pinouts. So, you have obviously ignition coil, you have exhaust gas temperature, we're not going to be using that. Uh, knock sensors, you've got one and two. On the 2J, it's got two knock sensors, so we'll be wiring them in. You've got all your analog inputs, which are for oil temp sensors, fuel temp, whatever. Um, you can, basically anything that's analog, you can wire into that. Uh, CRT, that's your coolant temp, so from your radiator or wherever your coolant temp is you wire into there you've got your Y band which we'll get onto in a bit that's all on the back here you've got the cam sync one and two so your cam sync is your obviously your camshaft uh, sensor um, some cars have two some have one on in my case it's only got one so we're just going to be using cam sync one you've got um, primary trigger that's your crank sensor Flex fuel, um, if you're running a flex fuel sensor, we're not because we're just going to be running pump fuel. Um, the switched, no idea what switched is. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's either, I, don't quote me on this, I'm not 100% sure, I need to look that up. But um, yeah, so it's either for adding switches or it's uh, switched power, I can't remember. Don't worry about that. Can battery, so that's obviously your um, ECU's 12 volt. More ignition coils, another exhaust tap gas temp, you have a knock analogs, you've got your TPS which is obviously your throttle position sensor, Y band, the VSS is your vehicle speed sensor, so depending on your car, um, the one we're doing obviously E36, uh, the one that comes, the vehicle speed sensor is in the diff, um, so you just tap into that. That's the cam sync we're going to be using, another wide band, another switch, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. This is your 5 volt supply. So any of the sensors that require 5 volt supply, just tap into this. Um, you've got your power ground, so that's the main ground. You've got your ECU ground, which is the same, just chassis grounds. And then you've got your sensor grounds. So on the EMU Black, you have three sensor grounds. So the main sensors that are going to be using this is basically your camshaft sensor and your crankshaft sensor. You want to keep them, obviously on this one, because you've got three, it's best to keep them separate. Uh, but you can, if you're using like a EMU Classic, you've only got one, you can just tap them both into there. You don't want to ground them out to your chassis, because it gets interference. That's why they put the sensor grounds on here. You've got your other analogs. You've got your IAT, which is your intake temp sensor. I haven't got one yet, but I will be adding one of those. Wide band, you've got another 5 volt supply there, analog, switch, analog, and then you've got the two more ground sensors. And then on the other connector, we're not going to be using much of this. We've got the some more some auxiliaries, um, which auxiliaries is stuff like, for example, here you can add your tack. Um, it's just for adding stuff basically. You've got your injectors, ignition, um, H bridge. I'm not sure what the H bridge is. Aux. That's if you if you've got. Um, so this has got enough for six ignition coils, uh, injectors. Sorry, but you can add if you've got a V8 or something. You can add them onto auxiliaries. Use Aux two and Aux one. Um, you've got the injectors, power ground. Um, you've got the ignition feed as well. So that's your switched 12 volts coming from your key. The Y band. Blah 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 blah. Injectors, power ground. So it's super simple, it looks scary. Here we have a pre-terminated wiring harness. 
So basically it's just wires and on one end it's got the crimps ready to go into these plugs. So all you're going to do, these are actually marked as well on each wire. I don't know if you can see that, it says for example cam or auxiliary. Looking at that, you're probably like, oh god, that looks incredibly complicated. But honestly, you literally grab one wire, plug it into here, trace it to wherever it is on your engine and plug it in. And you repeat that process over and over until you end up with all of them plugged in. And probably half of this we're not even going to use because we've deleted every sensor possible. Keep it nice and simple. Um, we've got all of this wiring shield in as well. It's just like to make it look pretty. Got some different thicknesses. Got loads of heat sink as well. Heat shrink, not sink. Um, this is the normal stuff. And I did order some with glue in. It might be these ones heat shrink oh yeah yeah these are the ones so they've got glue in them basically so when you melt them it seals them nice and good i won't film me doing the whole wiring harness because it'll be a, a three day long video but i'll just give you updates here and there just to sort of explain what i've done some of them like the coils i'm gonna have on its own little terminated harness so i'll wire them in and then just have a little plug so that you can just remove them make it a lot easier the injectors and all that i'm going to keep on the main loom and then obviously we have to wire in boost control and all that sort of stuff but that can all be done afterwards the main thing i just want to wire in all the sensors that are on the engine at the moment and then go from there so yeah catch back up with you guys in a sec also i forgot to say this is the stock wiring harness that come off of this engine which is 2jz g um what i've done when i unplugged it I marked up what each um, connector is. So that's injector one, for example, that, I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> all the ones that I don't need, I didn't mark, but all the ones that I do need, I marked. And what I'm gonna do, I haven't bought all new connectors, so I'm just gonna sort of snip here, for example, and then solder the new cables onto here and then sleeve it all. So I'm gonna be using all of the factory plugs. So now I just need to snip all the plugs off plug them into wherever i want them on here and then start the wiring process i think this is probably the easiest way to do it a lot of people know exactly they'll look at that plug and be like oh yeah that's for so and so i have no idea this is my first jay-z so i marked them all up it's a good little tip to do um yeah now i'm gonna chop all of these off basically right so this is my setup got it all laid out here Got all of the factory plugs all plugged in. Now I'm just gonna start attaching wire at a time. And then, yeah, the difficult bit isn't wiring it. So I could wire this in no time at all. The difficult bit is making it look nice. So, cause I'm gonna be shielding it with all of that. You gotta like solder a bit on, put a bit of shield on and work out how it's all gonna get shielded. Cause if you solder it all together, then try and put the shield on, you can't put the shield on. So yeah, this is the fun bit, but catch up with you guys in a bit right so i don't know where i left off on the last clip because basically i've just put my head down and been cracking out the wiring there's no point me showing you step by step each plug because your setups might be completely different this is just how i'm doing mine basically i've done all of the injectors um if we come down here so it looks like a bit of a mess at the moment because they're not all cable tied together but if you imagine it's all going to be together it's all nicely wrapped um done TPS, I've done the coolant temp, temp sensor, I've got a oil temperature sensor and I've got the oil pressure sensor, that's all wired in, um, got a common ground here which will just go, I'll probably bolt it to the manifold, um, I still haven't done the knock sensors and I haven't done the crank and camshaft sensor yet because I'm waited for for some shielded wire to come you can just use normal wiring but they're very sensitive so it's best to always use shielded wiring for them um, but that should hopefully be a Friday so I'll be able to do that slowly getting there this is the wiring from the um, alternator that won't go to the ECU that all goes to the actual wiring harness on the car itself to the fuse box um, on the injectors i've put this little six pin douche connector and i'm gonna just yeah that's the only bit i haven't really done so far i haven't done the coil harness yet 
I'm not sure what coils I'm going to run. I was going to use these K24 ones, but they, they sit a bit high. So I've ordered some a short coil to try out, and we'll see how that goes. If they look nice, I'll use them, and then I'll just wire them up. It'd be nice to have it on this plug so that we can just disconnect it and take all the coils off. It's not on the same harness. Makes life a lot easier. But this is all the wires I've done so far. Um, I just need to cut some of them down to size. I just sort of left them full length and I'll just cut them down afterwards. But yeah, it's slowly getting there. Been quite a few evenings of me just sat down doing the wiring. Also got the exhaust manifold. We've just got a cheap eBay one for now. It was like 200 quid. Um, I will upgrade to like a Walton Motorsport one or something at some point, but for now, just to get the car running, that's gonna be plenty that I haven't done yet. And there's the alternator one, that's all done. Um, but yeah, it's actually really easy. I've got, got the mess of wires that I've got here. <laughs> it's been a bit of a battle, but you just put some music on, sit down, and power through it it's it's really simple i think like i said earlier on in the video you literally just have one wire and you route it and you get the next wire you route it it's, it's it looks scary if you look at all them wires you're like oh god how on earth do i know where all that goes but it's honestly so easy don't get put off by it, by it. these wires are really cool as well because i don't know if you can see probably won't focus yeah, on each wire it actually says what it is so that's very handy so that's allowed me to do this because when I come to plug these into the ECU I already know where they go so each one says like analog 2 and TPS power um, coil like they all say what it is it's really good so I highly recommend getting that and not just using your normal wires makes life a lot easier don't get stuff muddled up it's getting there it's getting there I'll probably do the crank and camshaft sensors and stuff. Give you an update at that point. But yeah, it's looking fresh. It's looking good. It's looking like a, an actual Jay Z now. And we also put the sump on as well. I just came up and done that one evening. Um, this is an Adamat sump. I've not heard good stuff about it, but it's what we can afford at the moment. So we're going to give it a go. See if it leaks. If it don't, then we'll just keep it. But yeah, it's getting there. Just getting there. I will update you when I do the cam sensors and stuff. Right, so I've got quite a lot done since the previous clips. As you can see, I've got a nice little wad of wires now. It's getting there. It's pretty much everything is wired now. It's all tidied up. We've got the grounds there for some of the sensors. This here is for IAT and the fan control, but I don't have them yet, so. Just put that there for now. Um, PPS is all wired in. Um, all of these are ones that have to go to the chassis. So vehicle speed sensor, um, tachometer, grounds, 12 volts, switch 12 volts. All of that is on there. Then we got this one, which comes from the alternator that also has to go to the, the car. Here we have the wideband cables. Um, I haven't finished that one yet. Um, a little bit left to do on that one. I'm, I might put a plug on it here so that it's easier to take off Same as what I've done here with the coil packs. Just put them all on a plug much easier If you need to remove the engine or anything or just the coil packs it makes it a lot easier for the camshaft sensor crank sensor and the two knock sensors I've used this shielded wire um, because it's not going to focus but anyway yeah always use shielded wire I mean you don't have to but it's ideal to because they're very sensitive and you don't want to get interference from other things so use shielded wire um, but yeah it's all wired up now coil packs we were going to use k24 ones but I think we've decided to go for these because they sit much nicer and they don't need a bracket or anything. They are Volkswagen ones from Apollo. I think they're 1.4 TFSI, something like that. Nice and stubby. And they just click into place, which is super handy. Helps if I put it on the coil pack. There we go. See, solid. Um, all I have to do now, I need to double check that I've got it all okay. And then I'm just gonna obviously wrap all of this with the same stuff as this, just some wider stuff. But I'm pretty sure that's all of the wires now. Um, if we need anything else afterwards, we can just add them. Uh, where's that gone? There it is. 
I've gone through the list and just pretty much everything we need is all wired in now. The only thing is that I do want to fit some switches to put um, anti-lag and a launch control, uh, two-step kind of stuff like that just to have a bit of fun with. So I might look into that. I'm not sure how they work. Um, this is my first time doing this, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm definitely not a professional at this. Um, but yeah, that's the only things I haven't wired up. But I can do that afterwards, it's not a problem, because they'll be going into the cabin anyway. So I'll just wire it from the ECU into the cabin. To you guys, this was probably like, I don't know, a seven to ten minute video. <laughs> but for me, it's been a lot of long days and evenings figuring everything out. Um, it's... Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's easier than it looks. Like if you look at that, you're like, oh my god, where do I even start? But when you're doing one, one wire at a time and you just follow them, it's not too bad. I don't want to say it's super easy just because I haven't tried starting this yet. <laughs> it might not start. <laughs> so I don't, don't want to big up my head first, but yeah. Hopefully it starts. The good thing with running like ECU Master and aftermarket ECUs, you can test every output and make sure that you've got the wiring correct. So if you have messed up, you can. it's easy to trace. Um, the only thing is once the engine's in the car, it'll be more of a pain access in the wiring, but other than that, it should be good. That's probably gonna be it for today's video. Um, I mean, I've done 90% of the wiring now. It's just a case of plugging it all in. Let me know down below if you want me to do a part two. I might do a part two on finishing it all off and everything because I'm uh, working out where the wires go to the actual chassis itself. I don't want to put it all in one video because it would be like a two hour long video. It's getting there, it's getting there. Make sure you subscribe. I look a bit homeless at the moment. It's freezing so I've been leaving my beard. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and see you in the next one. Goodbye.